button and you can download a workbook where you can write your strategies from today. That'd be awesome. And that Q&A too is where we're going to take questions throughout the webinar. Don't stress if we don't answer them right away. We are going to take those all at the end. So if you don't have to bounce at the top of the hour, stick around. We have lots to share and we do some coaching and, and question answering at that time. Hey, good morning, Karen from California. Thanks for kicking us off. We got Sarah on the line as well. Sarah is going to be handling any technical questions we might have. So if you've got something like that, you can pop that in the Q&A and she'll help you as well. Let's get rocking and rolling here. Karen says she's excited to learn new info. We are excited that you are here to learn that. Where objection handling is, is pretty important. That comes up often on our coaching calls. Um, how, do I, how do I handle this? How do I handle that? So there's some pretty common ones, and Daryl's going to go through those today to make sure that you know what to say, how to handle it, the best um, concepts to, to grasp what we're saying. If you see there, uh, download the webinar workbook. Look at that handout where you see the little red button. Um, that is where you can download the workbook for today. Oh, you've got Margie. Thank you so much, Sarah. So those of you who are just coming on board, use that Q&A panel there, please, to tell us where you're from what you hope to get out of today. And if you have any questions or concerns uh, wrapped around specifically objection handling, you can pop those in there now too. Daryl's gonna use that to help steer the conversation as we go through today's session. So welcome, welcome. Hey, Susan from Ohio, thank you. Welcome, we're excited to have you here. As I said, if you're brand new to our series, we'd love to see that, we wanna welcome you as well. Uh, Daryl will be on in just a moment. We've got a lot to share with you today, so please, Grab your pen and paper or get your workbook um, downloaded and printed because we have a lot to share. It's going to feel a little fire hosey at times maybe, but um, we will get through it. And at the end, we'll answer any questions that you might have. Hey, good morning, Brian from Myrtle Beach. I love Myrtle Beach. It's one of my favorite places. See, I just got super Southern when I said that too. <laughs> That's how I roll. Um, so thank you. Those guys who are just coming in, use that Q&A panel there to tell us where you're from, what you hope to get out of today. Hey, Mary Budendak from Dayton, Ohio, where the sun is out. Well, that's an exciting thing to be to be happy about. Put a smile on your face this morning. Welcome. Mary's one of our superpower agents. We're excited to have you on the line. Thanks, Mary. And there is Hello, Jules. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. We've got so what kind of group? Bunch. We got a quiet bunch. We do. We have a quiet bunch. Yeah. All right. We don't have to do this today. <laughs> I already know this material. Oh, Come see, on, guys. Look, look, at, look, the minute you pop on, everybody's all chatty Kathy now. All right. Let, this is, uh, tell us what you hope to get out of today. Get engaged with this. This is not like sit and observe. You got to, let, okay, let's do a little teacher moment right now. There's two ways to live life. One is you be on the playing field, playing the game, or number two, you sit in the bleachers, looking down at the game, talking about the game, observing the game, but you're not playing the game. So I don't want you to observe. I want you to participate, be on the field with us. Tell us in the chat, what do you hope to get out of this? Come on, get on the field, baby. That's right. This is a this is a participatory sport, right? That's right. <laughs> hey, George from Pennsylvania, welcome. We got Berta says good morning. Good morning. Santa, hello. I see that. Very good. Carly Berta, Smart. I'm excited. I'm glad you're excited. Carly Smart, power agent from New Jersey. Good to see you, Carly. Uh, Santa, how aggressive. <laughs> That's, this is the New York webinar. <laughs> this is how we roll in New York. How this is how we roll. Curtis says, objection from door knocking. If your client buys my house, where will I move if inventory is so low? We hear that a lot right now, Curtis. Yep, we do. Uh, I'm excited, uh, Carly. <laughs> All right. And uh, Santa, hysterical. Yes, this is the New York version of training webinars. This we is, have this fun is not here. The, the softer, gentler version of coaching. That's right. This is this is not the Mary Poppins Walt Disney experience. This is the I don't know what this is, but it's the New York version. 
of we, training. We're straight talkers around here. We're straight talkers. We're straight talkers. We don't we don't got time to to mess around, to dance around it. We got we got things to do. That's right. We do have a lot of fun, Carla. You're right. Uh, Ramel says, been watching you for two years on and off. I'm fed up with myself resisting the cold calling. I want to be able to start. Ramel, are you a power agent, Ramel? Because, um, Ramel, if you're not a power agent, that's number one. You should become one. And I don't want to sound like I'm selling right now. But if you've been d dancing with me for two years, come on. This, enough is enough as far as you to have a breakthrough. You got to get serious. The good thing about the Power Agent program is that you and I can have one-on-one -on -one conversations in a group setting on the group. Every Monday, um, uh, my Power Agents have access to me live, and, and I coach them. You know, it's a group coaching. People can talk to me. So you need it's $47 a month, so it's, it's a ridiculous, inexpensive amount to have access to me. Um, Mary Bundeg, let the party begin. Mary's one of our Power Agents. <laughs> Where are my power agents, Bob Mueller? Forget about it. Where's Forget my power agents on the call? Power agents, uh, say hello to the to the guests, to the non-power agents. Say I'm a power agent. Good to see you. Curtis says you a spoonful of sassy. Spoonful of sassy. <laughs> I like it. That's that's you say that to New York. That's a that's a compliment. Right. As a matter of fact, sure. that's actually could be stronger. <laughs> the sassy, you know, New York is the Ramel said, no, I'm not. Oh, and wanted to become one. I did Tom Ferry, but they weren't able to change my pattern. Ramel, Tom's Tom's good. Tom's got some great stuff, but he's Tom is, you know, so our niche um, is is helping um, agents that are struggling, break through, not struggling anymore, getting to their next level. Um, you know, Tom attracts, you know, the people who are making two, three, four hundred grand a year. They really don't need help. They're just looking to um, be part of um, a group of people similar to them. Anyway, so, Ramel, you should try – do the trial today. We'll talk about it later, okay? Um, for $5, you can try the program and see if I help you, okay? But two years, man. Let's get going here. Exactly. I mean – All right, where's all my power agents? Go ahead, Julie. Take it away. Uh, let's see. Uh, Berta, too, help me make those phone calls. Yeah, so, I, well, I don't think – well, we're objection handling. I don't think we're prospecting today, but we do have training on that. And maybe you can touch on that while we're getting started. Um, Cause it seems like that, as I'm reading through, that's what people want, but that, that's a different webinar. Um, let's see. Greetings from Maryland, from Dana. Hello, Samuel, Grand Rapids. My wife is from Boogie Down Bronx. <laughs> okay. This is a sassy group today. I Boogie like Boogie Down Bronx. I love it. Jared said, hello, guest. Debbie says, hello, Darlene, power agent here. And I love it. Um, Lisa, power agent, good morning. Ernie, we put our information for referrals in Massachusetts, but nothing showing up. <laughs> okay, Ernie. Um, head to the chat. We'll talk about that in a bit, but I, I know you're in the chat with the gals now. They can help you with that. Uh, Tom is good. Okay. Uh, Angela, power agent, yes, power. give a yeah, cup of coffee and double your income. I love it, Angela. Thank you. Now, did I just say somebody said Mike Ferry's the best? What the hell are you doing? I just saw it. What the hell, you Mike Ferry's the best. What the hell are you doing on my call then? <laughs> see, see if Mike's got a webinar today. Go over there. Yeah, see if he's talking about objection handlers. Mike's With a, a good, New York accent and a little fun. Mike's a good guy, but he's a different style For sure. than uh, than us over here at Power Headquarters. He is definitely a hard sell type approach guy. Uh, we're, uh, we don't, we don't teach, uh, I'm going to get my slides ready. We're going to get started, but here's a little teacher moment, uh, right now for everybody. We don't teach, um, how to close people. The reason why we don't teach how to close people is do you like to be closed? I, I don't think I know of any human being that likes to be closed. So we don't teach power agents to close. We teach power agents to coach. Based on what somebody is committed to having happen in their life, whatever their next level is, what they're committed to, a real estate professional finds out what a person is committed to. And based on the commitment that professional, that agent coaches their client on how to get to their next level in life. That's what we teach. Not close, not coach, not close people, but coach people. We also don't teach you how to sell people. 
We don't, we, I don't like to be sold. Do you like to be sold? I don't think there's any human being that likes to be sold. You know what we do? Power agents don't sell people. Power agents serve people. And how do you serve people is you find out what they're committed to. And based on what they're committed to, you give them the appropriate coaching so they can get to the next level. That's what we teach. And I would love to see more realtors think this way. All right, Julie, I'm sorry. That was had nothing to do with today's topic. No, but you know what? We always say that the coaching, not closing and the serving, not selling. But I just thought of another. We don't technique people. We teach people. Right. So nobody wants to be techniqued. They don't want to be sold. They don't want to be closed. You know, so that's right. Absolutely. So what you do in real estate and, and because we are talking about the, the listing appointment today. And, and let me just get I'm getting my slide ready. So even though we haven't officially started. We actually have started. <laughs> um, and that is um, what, what you do on a listing appointment, which is what I'm going to teach you today as well, is you find out what people are committed to. And based on what their commitment is, you coach them and you help them get to their next level. Right. So and, and here's what um, I, I hope this is OK. I'm teaching. This is not part of the webinar today. I hope it's helping somebody. But some of you, the reason why you're uncomfortable with listing appointments is because you think your job is to close people or to get a listing. And, and I'd like you to take the pressure off of yourself to perform and have it be about serving people, finding out what they're committed to and helping them get to their next level. And I think if we come from more from a service standpoint, then people will see when you get really good at this, being a power agent, people will choose you. You don't have to close them. They'll choose you because of who you are. All right. Let's get into the topic, Jules. Uh, I'm ready to rock. Go. Excellent. Welcome, everybody, to today's webinar, How to Handle Listing Appointment Objections with our host with the most, Daryl Davis. We're so happy to have you here. To get the most from today's session, we want you to take really good notes um, and we want you to use that Q&A panel there to ask any questions you might have throughout the session today. Um, if, don't stress if we don't get them right away. We will be taking those at the end. So stick around if you can. If you want to reach us at any time after today's session, you can reach us on all social media channels at Daryl Speaks. Joe is the author of three books, all published by McGraw-Hill Publishers. That first one you see there, How to Become a Power Agent in Real Estate. It's actually one of the best-selling books to real estate agents on Amazon. <laughs> Daryl was uh, named this year as one of the top real estate newsmakers and influencers by Risk Media Magazine, his fourth year in a row, I might add. Thank you. And he's a recipient of the coveted CSP designation, which is only given to less than 2% of speakers worldwide. On that note, Daryl, I can't wait to hear what you have to say today. Thank you, Julie. I see somebody, Rhonda. Yes, we are recording this, so we'll tell you how to get access to this after the, the training. Um, first question is, is this webinar sales pitch? Because I know we have, like Rhonda, we have some new people on the call. So let me just explain. No, it's not. Um, what this is, is a training for our power agents. So... We have a coaching program uh, called the Power Program, and our members are called Power Agents. So some of you are on this call, you're guests, and we're really happy that you're on this call. But from time to time, and the reason why I'm saying this is that you'll hear me talk to the Power Agents about maybe something that's in the program for them, reference something for them. So that's why. But I'm going to tell you, if you're a guest, this is loaded with content. So you're going to get a lot of a lot of value out of this. If you decide that you want to become a power agent, I'll give you that opportunity at the end of the hour. This webinar is going to go at least um, an hour of content, and then I'm going to stay on to answer questions. So, um, and sometimes those questions go for another 45 minutes. So, uh, buckle up but a cup. <laughs> but anyway, I will show you as a guest how to get everything on that screen emailed to you right away at a ridiculous price, but we'll cover that at the end. Now, some sessions uh, go wide that I teach and some of them go really deep. This particular topic, we're going really deep on how to um, handle some objections on a listing appointment, how to get the homeowner to choose to hire you. Um, we're not going through the whole listing appointment. Uh, for like, so this would be like one of the webinars that we've done 
is how to, when you ring the doorbell, you go over to the house and how do you get to the table? How do you talk about MLS and yard sign and how everything you do? So this session is assuming you've had your listing appointment and you're now at the part where you're going to ask the homeowner to hire you. How do you handle some of the objections that come up? So that's what this topic is. Um, what you're seeing on the screen right now, though, is I just wanted to give you a little update. I was doing this this morning about the market, and I want to point some. This is just from CNBC. This is this morning, and here are some of the things that they talk about. Redfin reports the first annual rental decline in three years. So rentals are going down. So more people are starting to buy. Now is an opportunity for investors to get into home building. Home building sentiment rises in April. Home building segment, again, another builders are grabbing near, right, right? So there's builders, they're starting to build. And then I saw at realtor.com, you'll see at the top, uh, U.S. housing starts, uh, oh no, mortgage rates fall to lower levels in six weeks. U.S. pending home sales rise for the third month in a row. You've got uh, mortgage rates fall to the lowest in six weeks. Pending home sales rise for the third month in a row. Uh, U.S. home sales rise for the fifth. But here's my point. My point that I want to get clear with you on is that the past quarter, the last quarter of last year, things got really tight. Inventory was really low. The mark, and I know for most of us, it's been a scary thing. I'm telling you, we're going to start to see the pendulum shift into some normalcy. We're going to see more listings coming back, mortgage rates, they went, they doubled, right? But now they kind of hit a ceiling. Now they've been coming down for the past few weeks. Um, so we're starting to see that normalcy. The agent who is trained on how to do listing appointments, how to prospect, that's the one that's going to have a great 2023. This is the year, this is not even the year, this is the quarter where you've got to get really trained on doing listing appointments, handling pricing objections, commission objections, prospecting, generating appointments. So all in right now, gang. Okay, let's talk about um, this webinar, how to handle the listing appointment objections. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give you this training I'm going to cover like three segments. One is I'm going to cover the Ten Commandments of, of listings and handling objections. Then we're going to, second part is how to handle that. Uh, what is an objection? Stall versus a condition. We'll explain that. And then I'm going to give you some objection handling techniques for when you're on the listing appointment. So first of all, the 10 commandments, they must believe and trust you. So I, I let me stop for a second. I, I want to get us all on the same page. So some of you have different concerns right now, how to get listing appointments, how to prospect, how to even do the listing app appointment. So this session, we're just carving out one thing, which is you've been at the appointment, you had a conversation, and now you're asking them to hire you, you know, to press hard, it's cheap carbon, whatever. So this is where this is. So when I talk about this first part, they must believe and trust you. Um, when you're in the listing appointment, up until asking for the signature, because the listing happens not at that final moment, it's the whole hour or two hours that you were there up to that point. And so they really have to start to trust in you that you have their best interests in mind. Okay. So that's the first part. So you've got to have a really strong listing appointment. Like Power Agents, you have one of our trainings is how to do the entire listing appointment from the moment you walk into the door. So you got to really master that. Second thing is objection handling is simply changing their perception. You know, when you think about it in real estate that homeowners have, what's the perception that homeowners have of us? Well, they have a perception of us is that um, that we cost money, that, um, you know, we got our license out of a Cracker Jack box. Or worse, uh, we, we or not maybe this not not worse than a Cracker Jack box, but going to the county clerk office and filling out a form, right? Homeowners really don't understand what a real estate professional is. As a matter of fact, even some real estate professionals don't understand it. Meaning that I think it's a total misnomer that you, we we're called salespeople. I really think it's a misnomer because let me share with you, salespeople. Um, somebody that sells furniture, that's a salesperson. Somebody who sells cars is, is a salesperson. Uh, 
Um, somebody at, maybe in a jewelry store at the mall, they're selling their product. Their commitment, salespeople have a commitment to the transaction. Uh, and the person they're selling to is a customer and you want to be nice to the customer. That's how you do it. But in real estate, it's different. See with real estate, so for example, when you hire a homeowner hires you, you have a fiduciary responsibility to the homeowner. They're your client. You know who else has fiduciary responsibility? That's a legal term folks. You know who else has fiduciary responsibilities? A doctor has fiduciary responsibility to patient, a lawyer, has a fiduciary responsibility. It's a legal term. Financial planners have a fiduciary responsibility. Now, we don't call financial planners financial salespeople. We don't call doctors medical salespeople. We don't call lawyers uh, legal salespeople. We should not be called real estate salespeople because in our industry, like others, we have a fiduciary legal responsibility to our clients. And so what we need to do, so homeowners... Their percent, let's go back to this. Homeowner, homeowners' um, perception is that we're salespeople. And part of what we have to do is change their perception to understand no, 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 we're not salespeople. We're professionals that have a legal responsibility to our clients, a fiduciary responsibility. Number three, look at objections as an opportunity to improve your skill. Now, this is real important. Listen to me. L listen to me. Not all of you need this, but I know you. You now need this, that when you get an objection or you leave a listing appointment, you beat yourself up and you internalize it too much, thinking there's something wrong with you. You're not good at this. No, man. Every time, listen, every time you go on a listing appointment and you don't get that listing. Let me tell you what it means to be great on a listing appointment. What it means great to be in real estate, it's communication. Communication, that is the skill of a real estate professional. Listen to what I'm saying. Think about this. Everything, 90% of what we do is, is communication. When you're calling for sound by owners, that's communication. When you're calling past clients, that's communication. When you knock on somebody's door and you have a dial, that's communication. When you do a listing appointment, that's communication. When you present an offer, it's communication. When you deal with buyer remorse, 90% of our business is communication. Now, communication is an art form. What I want you to do is, that because this is what I did. When I got into real estate at 19 years old, 19 years old, I started this business. I was living on my own since I was 16. I didn't have parents raised. I had a lot of learning to do. So I was thrown into this business of real estate at 19 years old, trying to figure this out. And I got nobody helping me. I'm trying to figure out my life. So what I did when I went on listing appointments and I didn't get that listing, I swear this is what I did. Before I would pull away from the homeowner's house, I sat in the car and I reviewed the listing appointment. And I said to myself, what can I have said or done differently to move these people to take action in hiring me? I looked at, I do that today. Every time I do, my team will tell you, every time we do a, a, a seminar, a webinar, I'll debrief with them and say, what could I have done differently? What could I have said? Did I spend too much time on this? Should I set it a different way? That's how you should look at your business. Don't take it personal. Look at every uh, result that doesn't produce the result that you want as an opportunity for you to become sharper at your, at your profession, which is communication, you see. So I want you to go to listing appointments I want you to prosper. I want you to do the things and say, how can I master communication? How could I have done that a little bit differently? Because then every breakdown can be a breakthrough. Every opportunity where you don't get the result that you want, you actually become stronger because of it. You know, when you get a pencil in a, in a I don't have any pencils here. When you buy pencils at, at the store and they come in the box, they're flat, Right. They're flat. You can't use a flat pencil. How? What do you got to do? You got to put the pencil in a pencil sharpener. It's the friction that makes it sharp. It is the friction that helps the pencil give birth to the pencil's purpose. Every friction, every negative, everything that happens that doesn't produce the results you want is an opportunity for you to become sharper at your profession, which is 90% communication. I hope this is helping somebody because none of what I'm saying was supposed to be said. It's not on the slide. 
but I hope it's helping you. Number four, take your time when handling objections. Don't freak out. Look at it like an artist painting, but you're using your words. Think, take your time, how you're going to communicate this homeowner to move them to hire you. Number five is handle objections at the end. If something comes up, don't address it yet because the reason why is because on a scale of one to 10, 10 being they absolutely trust you. It's like your mother. It's like your fuck. You're like a hundred percent trust. Zero. You're a salesperson. I don't know you. This is a listing appointment. When you ring that doorbell, maybe you're at a one or two. You're there a little bit because otherwise you wouldn't have got the appointment already. So you're at a one or two, three. When it comes and they throw an objection at you and the trust level, you're at four. Don't handle it now because they're not going to believe or trust anything that you say. So you wait to the end of handling objections because you're going to spend another hour or so looking at the house, asking them this, where you moved to, why they're there, when you need to get there by. Oh, you got, oh, that's, you got family there. Oh, that's what you're building that trust. So handle the objections at the end. Number six, the better your listing conversation is, the fewer objections you'll get. You know what? Let me tell you when you get really good. Power agents, they'll tell you, you get really good when they interrupt you and say, you know what? I, I, I don't need to see anymore. Give me the paperwork. Wouldn't that be nice, right? That they interrupt you. Say, I just, give me the, let's just do this. That happens because you get better. So, so mass, be committed to mastering your listing conversation. And gang, this is for the people that need to hear this too. If 90% of real estate is communication, what is communication? Communication is an art form. It's an art. Like dancing is an art. Painting is an art. Do people like, unless you're a savant, you, you don't become, you're not born a painter. Like you develop skill, you develop your dance, you develop your entertainment, you're, you develop real estate professional communication. So that's why I want you to look at every breakdown is an opportunity for you to have a breakthrough. Every time you don't get a listing is an opportunity for you to reflect and master the art of communication. Don't be so hard on yourself. You've got to learn. You weren't born a realtor. When your parents gave birth, you said, oh, honey, look, we had a top list. <laughs> you got to learn this. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Some of you, you don't get the results that you want and you internalize it and you make yourself value of who you are as a human being less. Stop doing that to yourself. Stop beating yourself up. You just have to learn it. You've got to give yourself permission to fail, per permission to learn. What would your kids, what would you tell your kids? Would you punish your kids because they didn't know the math as soon as they went into the math grade? No, you, you help them go through it. It's a learning process. Some of you got to be kinder to yourself. Number seven, use metaphors and analogies. Talk their language. You know, for those of you who don't know me or know us, power agents, they'll tell you. We're not about memorized scripts. The problem with memorized scripts is what happens if the other person doesn't know their part? <laughs> like, look at me. You see me right now. Like some of these webinars, you watch a webinar, you don't see the speaker. You just have the slides going and you hear the voice in the background because this is what they're reading a script. That's easy. Am I looking at any notes over here? I'm talking from my heart. So, but how, what's helping me communicate with you is using metaphors and analogies. I don't even remember the ones I just did because they're just flying out of my head, like the pencil one, the pencil one. That's a metaphor. That's not a memorized script. So what I want you to do is when you're doing it, and I'm going to show you that later, when you do a listing point, you use metaphors and analogies to communicate your point. You don't need memorized scripts. Trying to do memorized scripts makes you inauthentic as a human being, and it makes you uncomfortable. And that's why you don't like doing listing appointments in the first place. See, when you think about working with buyers, do you, do you take any training course where they say, here's the script for a buyer appointment? No. Because you can't do that. And this is why most agents like working with buyers because they can be authentically themselves. But somehow we got this bad training by some people that say, here's the script on how to do a listing appointment. Meanwhile, they were never an agent to begin with, but they're going to give you the script on how to do it. And this is you on a listing appointment. And this is why you don't like it. When you use metaphors and analogies, you can talk more from your heart, you see. All right. Pay attention if they are with you. So one thing, if there's one thing I don't like about webinars like this is I can't, I can't see you. I, I don't know how I'm doing. Am I helping you? Is this, am I connecting with you? 
You can throw it in the chat. Tell me, are you learning anything? Tell me now, because I want to see that. When you are on a listing appointment, it's important that you get a sense that you're that that's not just using the right words, but they're listening to you. There's a connection, so you want to pay attention to that. But uh, I'm wait. I know there's a delay here, but are you guys learning anything? Let me see. Tell me if if you're learning anything. Let me just move my my thing over here. Is this helping any of you? Cindy, yes. Okay, good. Lori, yes. With the next one, always with you, Bethany. You're very sweet. Cheryl, all good. Okay, great information. <laughs> Susie, this is the best info ever. Oh, thank you so much. Mary Buttendeck, we love you. Great stuff. Okay, good. Thank you, gang. Julie, you can publish that. Thank you, gang. I appreciate that. All right. So continuing on. Many objections occur from ineffective communication. This is what I was saying earlier. What I want you, what I want you to do is, um, is what I want you to do is be committed. Listen, this is really good. Oh my gosh, here it comes. You ready? Are you ready? This is, this is awesome. I want you to stop being committed to getting the listing. I want you to go to listing appointments and be committed to mastering communication. Boom. Listen, when you go on a listing appointment committed to getting the listing, you are putting too much pressure on you to perform. You're setting up a win-lose scenario. You get the listing you want. If you didn't, you're a loser. I want you to stop that. Stop being committed to getting a listing, taking a listing. I want you to go on listing. I want you to go on listing appointments and be committed to mastering communication. I, if you believe in your heart that you are of service to homeowners, if you believe in your heart that a homeowner is better off with you than doing it any other way, if that's who you are and you go on that listing appointment and they don't hire you, the breakdown was in communication and how you articulated that feeling. So I want you to leave the appointment in those scenarios and, and, and ask yourself that question. How could I have communicated more effectively, you see? So that's, that's my advice. All right, let's continue on here. Be assumptive when you're inviting action. I'm going to show you how to do that. So when you've done your listing appointment, you're sitting down. By the way, I know some of you are going to want a recording of this because I am saying things that um, I've not said in a long time. Last time we did this webinar was a year ago. I looked. And um, so I'm, I'm saying some things that I know for some of you this is going to help. I'm going to show you how you get the recording at the end, okay? So you can play it over and over again. Some of you are going to want to play this when you're in the car before you go into a homeowner's house, which is a good idea. So number 10 is be assumptive when you're inviting action. Let me, let me show you what I mean. By the way, for the guests, let me talk to the guests for a second, power agents. Let me talk to them. Guests, if you decide when I'm done training you right now, you want to become a power agent, try it for a month, you're going to get everything that's on the screen right now. But the two of the things is going to be a full recording and slides, PowerPoint slides on how to do a listing appointment from the moment you ring the door to the moment that you get the listing. OK, what I'm going to do is just show you the one section now, because it's part of handling objections is when you get them to list with you, what you're going to do is when you sit down with the homeowner, you're first going to agree on the price. I'm not going to teach you how to present price now. That's not what this webinar is, because that's that's a whole other thing. But what you want to do is I'll give you a little tip. I'll give you a little tip really quick because I don't like leaving it hanging like that is what you can do is uh, have them decide the price with you. And how you do that is you show them the comps in front of them. You show them this comp, 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 and you explain them. Now, listen, if you are a bank appraiser looking at these numbers, what number would you come up with? And so that way you try and understand, explain to them the process of pricing on how bank appraisers do it and, um, and, and, and have them do it with you. Okay, so that's a quick one. Assumptively fill out the agreement. Let me show you how you assumptively fill out a listing agreement. Now, if this was live and I could hear your response, but, let, but if, I, if you were a homeowner and I said, all right, let me just, uh, Mr. Masson, let me just get some information. 
Um, by the way, what's today's date? Today's, uh, okay, April. See, that's how you start writing. I just did it. It's so smooth. You, you have the listing agreement in your form. You say, let me just get some information uh, on, um, by the way, what's today's date? Today's the, um, oh, so, okay. See, when they tell you the date, it's almost like they're telling you, go ahead, start writing. <laughs> now, if they say, well, hang on a second, and then you're going to handle the objection. We'll cover that in a second. So let me get some information. What's today's date? Keep them involved. As you're filling out the forms, now every state, every MLS has different forms. So I'm just going to give you the concept of, of somehow not have silence because if you're filling out the listing agreement and they're being quiet, what, when they're being quiet, what are they doing? They're thinking, this is not good. You don't want people to think because that's when objections come up. So, you know, you might say things like, listen, as, as you're filling it out, Mr. And Mrs. On us. Now, as far as the yard sign, um, where do you think we should put the yard sign? Because I was thinking, you know, either the you know, we could do it on the left side by the driveway or or on the right side by your neighbor's front. Where do you think is a good spot? Oh, I think it should be in the middle. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. Put it in the – so you want to uh, – should we leave the washer and dryer? Now, you know they're going to leave the washer and dryer, but my point is – my point is here, while you're filling out the agreement, you don't want them – you don't want quiet because if there's quiet, then they start thinking. And that's when objections happen. Okay. You hand them the pen. Don't put the pen down on the table because it'll become like a nuclear pen. Mr. and Miss, neither one are going to pick it up because they'll be like, if this doesn't work out, it's your fault. You picked up the pen first. So hand them the pen. Now, the question is, who do you hand the pen first to? Do you it's to give it to the, the husband or to the wife? Or <laughs> nowadays, it could be either husband or either wife. Um, and, <laughs> and, um, I'll tell you the right answer. The right answer is whoever you feel is ready to pick up the pen, right? So if you've been there for an hour and a half, two hours, and 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 you feel like Mr. over Mrs. has been more like, yeah, this is good there. I like that. They give him the pen first, you know? Um, director signature, you can lighten the moment and say, all right, just press hard there. It's carbonless paper. <laughs> and then ask the spouse a question, meaning that when you give it, to let's say the husband and he takes the form. You say, now, now, Mary, let me ask you a question. Are you, have you decided what your kitchen? I see. I love the kitchen you have. What kind of kitchen you're going to look for in the new house? Is it the same country feel? Okay. I'm distracting her. And I, okay, he's done a gift. And I said, now, John, uh, the workbench, I didn't ask you that. Did you want to keep the workbench here? Or do you want to take it apart and bring it with you? It doesn't, he's not going to take it, but I don't care. I'm trying to distract the two of them because if one takes it and the other one, they start talking, well, honey, what do you think? You think we should do this? We just met Daryl. I don't know. So you want to interrupt them so they, they don't start throwing objections. Okay. Now, Let's talk about how are we doing, gang? Are you guys learning anything? Could you give me a little feedback here? Is this helping you? Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get into how to handle objections, uh, understanding it, and then I'm going to give you some actual uh, metaphors and analogies. Is this helping you? I'm looking at the chat here, gang. There's a bit of a delay. Um, so, <laughs> Julie, uh, Julie, I don't want to know what you think. Julie said, love when you roll. Okay. Uh, so I, that was a private note to me. Love it, Darlene. Very good. Okay, great. Love this, Angela. Uh, Tansy, love it. Okay, great. Yes, yes, Susie. Yes, thank you. Some great tips. All right, we got so much more coming. This is great. Okay, good. All right. Thank you, gang. All right, good stuff. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's talk about there's, there's, there's a difference between an objection, a condition, and a blow off. I'm going to explain the three, okay? A condition, so when somebody, a condition is a real reason why they can't hire you. So there's going to be some scenarios where, for example, job relocation. So if somebody's getting relocated and they tell you, well, I have to wait for the company, they're going to make me an offer, or I don't know if the job's going through retirement, I got another year, I can't make the move, uh, divorce, I got to check with my attorney. So there's certain conditions that it's not an objection. See, an objection you can handle. Conditions you can't. So when you get a condition, you just offer other services and keep in touch with them. Okay? So that's a condition. Now, the objection, uh, this, an objection is what they believe to be the real reason why they shouldn't hire you. Objections you can handle. And I'm going to go through in a minute different objection handlers. 
Um, we have a friend in the business. The price is too low. The commission is too high. We're going to interview other brokers, et cetera. So with, with objections, those you can actually handle. And I'll go through some of those with you in a moment. Now, the blow off, this is what I want to be clear with you on the blow off. It's an objection they have. Uh, an, an objection they have are not telling you and they're trying to avoid telling you. Okay. So a blow off, let me give an example that'll help. You say, we want to wait for something. We need to think about it. We need to pray on it. Uh, we're just the type of people who don't make quick decisions. Like all of those things, they're trying to blow you off and get you out of the house. When they tell you we want to wait, we need to think about it, we need to discuss it or some, nah, you can't trust that. So what you want to do is you want to find out what the real objection is because there's a real reason why they're not hiring you and um, they're not being forthcoming and telling you. So I'm going to show you how to do that and how to improve your listing appointment. So for example, when you get the blow off, your job is to create urgency or validate the industry or or they have not bought into you. So in other words, they don't see the value in realtor, they don't see the value in you, or they don't get that maybe they need to be more urgent with this. So when you get the, if you keep getting that, by the way, that's another thing. If you keep getting the same things, for example, commission objection, if you keep getting the commission objection, that is no accident that you keep getting that. It's almost like you're doing or not doing something to, to have the commission always be an issue. That's not an accident. So what I want you to do is maybe you're not doing one of two things. You're not validating the value of realtor or you're projecting, you're not projecting that confidence. If you, the sellers are like dogs. They can smell fear. And if you feel uncomfortable in your communication, then they're going, that's going to give them pause and they don't see the value in you. Now, Daryl, how do you overcome that? You just got to keep going on more appointments and keep mastering it. Be committed to mastery and communication. If they keep, watch this, if they keep, if they want, if you keep getting the length of listing, like we'll give you two months or three months and you're want four or five or six. So if you keep getting that objection to come, you're not convincing them of your ability, meaning they don't know for sure if you're good. So they're going to try you. I'll give you a month. I'll give you two months. So then they, they, you move them, but not enough. They're still not sold on you yet. That's what that means. If you keep getting the price objection, well, you're not setting up the CMA correctly and, and coaching them. You're not showing them there's two different prices on every home. There's the listing price, there's the realtor price and the FISBO price are two different prices. And that's a, that's a whole other webinar that power agency, you have that in your assets of, of webinars, okay, on how to do that. Okay. Now, getting past the blow off, let me give you some ideas on this. So when they say, we'll get back to you, we need to think about it. We need to sleep on it. We need to check our horoscope. <laughs> Here, I'm going to give you some ideas how to get past that. Because when you get the blow off, like we need to think about it, sleep on it, you want to try and find out what, okay, listen to me. If you're on a listing appointment and they and they don't they don't give you a concrete reason why they're not hiring you, like you know, well, Daryl, we need to sleep on it or think about it, and we never make quick decision. Like th th there's something that's holding them back. That's 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 on the surface. So you want to get to below the surface and get to the heart of the matter as to okay, w w what didn't I communicate effectively? Like if you're committed to selling. Either by the end of the conversation of a listing appointment, one of two things should happen. They should either definitely decide that they want to hire you or they definitely are going to hire an agent. That's what should happen. Okay. And if, if, if those things don't happen, then you need to help find out what's really holding them back. Nobody's going to, when they say we need to think about it or sleep on it, they're not going to, what are they going to do? They're going to go into a sleep and coma and that. No, they're gonna, when you leave the house and they say, I got to sleep on it. What are they going to do when you leave? What do you think Mr. And Mrs. is going to do? They're going to talk about the real reason why they didn't hire you. So you need to try and get clear what that real reason is. So let me show you some, some ways to do that. Um, so the multiple choice technique, the concept of the multiple choice is you're going to deliver a bunch of possible cons concerns one at a time to reveal what's holding them back. 
you start with the one that you think. So for example, they say, Daryl, we just need to sleep on it. Give us a, a couple of days or a couple of weeks and, and we'll call you. Well, let me ask you this. Is, is it something about the price when I showed you the pricing? And, and um, is that a concern? Like you think we should be at a different price than that? No, no, no. We're fine with the price. Okay. Do you think it's it was it maybe the commission and the net number to you? Is that what's holding you back from, from moving forward with me tonight? And, and, and if they, so what you do is the length of the listing, do you want a shorter term, me or my company, other agents, you want to interview, or is there something about my marketing? So what you do, gang, with the multiple choice technique is you're spoon feeding them uh, one at a time, one at a time, and you start with the thing that you think might be the problem. And so you're going to help them to be honest with you as to why they're not signing the listing tonight. Now, when you find out what the real reason is, then you go to the next thing, which we're going to go into is how to handle it. Okay. Another way to do this is the key concerns and how the key concerns works. The concept is you present, you present a few general concerns that kind of forces the homeowner to pick one. Because if you do the multiple choice and they say, no, it's not you, it's not the price, it's not the, it's not, it's not, it's better you have something than to leave with nothing. So you say, well, listen, you know, here's what I find, Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, when somebody's at this place and when I feel like I can really help them uh, and they're still not sure, there's usually one of a few key reasons why they don't pull the trigger and, and move forward and hire me. Um, and, and I'm going to show you what those seven are. So I just did it. You folks seem serious about selling your home and I believe I can help you. There's obviously something that's holding us back. My experience has taught me it's usually one of seven reasons for this. Now, now, by the way, gang, I have so much to give you. So let me keep going here. I'm, I'm going to share you, show you guys how everybody can get the slides at the end. So, so just let me finish teaching and, and I'll show you how, how um, you know, power agents get the slides and I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Um, so you tell them, so you got, there's usually one of seven reasons. Now, what's different with this one, as opposed to the multiple choice, let me, let me be clear with you. The multiple choice is you're feeding, you're spoon feeding one at a time. Is it the price? Is it something about the price? Is it something about my commission? Is it the, and, and after you present one, they say, no, it's not that. Okay. Is it this? No, it's not that. Is it this? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Now you can handle that. With this, the seven key concerns, you're feeding all seven, and then you're going to ask them to pick, if you had to pick one, which would it be? So, for example, um, usually Mr. and Mrs. Hunt, I find that when a homeowner doesn't pull the trigger, when they're committed to selling, like I believe you guys are, it's usually one of seven things. It could be a concern about the length of listing. Um, it could be the commission rate, that they think that there's it's better to get something at a different rate or a lower rate that they want to try it on their own, maybe to still save the commission, like they haven't really seen the value in working with a realtor at this point. Uh, something about me or my company, which is possible. I mean, you know, my mom loves me, but not everybody loves me, <laughs> you know? So, and that's fine. Um, or it could be my company. Uh, it, it, I may not do what I said I'm going to do. In other words, like there's a concern of that feeling of being sold, uh, not making that quick decision because you don't still trust me that I have your best interest in mind. It's, it's a possibility. They don't want to be tied to one broker. They think it's in their best interest to just say to agents, bring me a buyer and I'll pay you a commission. Or they just don't want to make that quick decision of being so sold. Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, if you had to pick one of these seven things that are holding you back, which one would it be? And then you just shut up. Now, the reason why this is good technique, gang, is because it's better that they pick one so you can handle it than for you to leave saying, let us sleep on it, pray on it, call 1-900-HOROSCOPE, and then we'll get back to you. Um, um, so th those, those, are the, those are the two best techniques. And the last technique in doing this is the Good Samaritan. If you can't get any... Um, uh, anything from the homeowner as to why they're not signing with you. The good Samaritan is this. You, you, you tell them, listen, obviously you guys don't feel comfortable with me. I firmly believe you need to hire a real estate professional uh, than versus doing this on your own. And for some reason, I haven't, I haven't conveyed that to you. So let me give you a list of a few agents that you should interview. And so now what you're basically doing is you're putting their needs way ahead of your own. And you're saying, listen, if you're not going to hire me, 
you know, listen, you need to not be a fizzbo. You shouldn't do this on your own. I believe in my industry. Uh, there's something about me that we didn't click, and that's fine. I respect that. Here's a list of three other professionals in the market that I respect. They have integrity, and I think you should call those guys because doing FISBO or doing this on your own is not a good choice for you. So that's, that, is the, that is the Hail Mary. Uh, what's brilliant about the Hail Mary is that you're really putting them ahead of you. And in some cases, what has happened to me is when you do that Hail Mary, they're like, you know what? If you're willing to recommend other agents, that seals it for me. I'm not going to call anybody. Give me the paperwork. Let me sign. But that's the last, last, last resort, okay? Now, okay, let's talk about objections. Now, power agents, let me just share with the, talk to the power agents for a second, because now we're going to go into how to handle objections, Um uh, other than, because that was not the objection, that was the stall we want to think about asleep. But how do you handle the objections? Now, power agents, when you go to the classroom, you have a plethora of objection handling techniques. It's all there for you. I'm going to just share some of them right now. These are some of my favorite ones, okay? Am I, am I diehard power agents like Mary Bunnendeck or any of the power agents that are on every week? Uh, some of this will sound familiar because I love teaching my favorite ones, and um, but you can do whatever ones that work for you. Okay. The first one is uh, bring us a buyer and then I'll pay you a commission. Now, when a homeowner says, listen, we don't, we want to do FISBO, but you know, bring us a buyer and then we'll pay you. Well, you say, you, then you do the six bakers and here's how that works. Mr. or Mrs. Hanahana, let's pretend that um, you have a daughter and your daughter's getting married. And so you want a wedding cake, right? So what you do is you go to six different bakers and you say to each baker, listen, I'm having my daughters get married uh, this Saturday. We have a hundred guests and um, we want the best possible cake for our guests. So what I want you to do is uh, bake us a cake uh, along with the other five bakers. And then we're going to come and whichever one of you buys the best, uh, makes the best cake, that's the cake we're going to purchase. Now, here's my question, Mr. and Mrs. Hanna. How many of these six bakers are actually going to roll up their sleeves, spend their money, their time, and their resources to bake a cake for 100 people without you committing to them? None. Because you haven't committed to any one baker for them to spend their money, time, and, and resources to produce the result for you. When you say to the real estate community, bring me a buyer, and then I'll pay you a commission, you don't have any one agent rolling up their sleeves, uh, spending their money and time and energy to work best for you. You can't do it. You got to give a commitment to one in order for them to spend their time and resources. So that's the six baker technique. Um, our house is special. We did all these improvements. We don't yeah, you know, our when you're uh, this is why we don't need an agent. We can do this ourselves, right? So let me show you this. And this is why our house is worth more money than what you're telling us. There was um now this is for, now whether you're a trekkie or not, I I, I want to show you something. This is powerful. So I, I am into Star Trek gang, but um forget that part. This is um so most of us know what Star Trek is. They Christie's had a auction of um props from this this franchise and one of the props for example is um it was this bottle of wine now one of the character uh, is captain jean-luc bacardi he's french and blah 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 anyway so he had his own winery this captain so he had these uh bottles in as a prop it was only in i think two episodes um, and they expected it to sell for about five hundred to seven hundred dollars. The actual selling price uh, at Christie's auction was six thousand six hundred dollars. Now, what you have to understand, it was a fake bottle, and there was actually no wine in it. Okay, and it's a fake, but it sold for sixty six hundred sixty sixty six hundred dollars. Now. Here's another one. There, one of the episodes was, um, I forget the name of the episode, uh, but it was all around this flute. And this flute was only in one episode, although they did just show it in the current uh, series uh, another time. But so it's only, but by, by this auction, they only used it once. It was only one episode, but the whole episode was around that flute. 
Now, they expected that to go for three to five hundred dollars. The actual uh, hammer price was forty thousand dollars. Now, what's interesting is this uh, flute is not a real flute. It is a piece of wood with just things glued on it. That's foam in there. And the box is also a, 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 like a fake box. It's like made out of foam. So for forty thousand dollars, there's a point that I'm making here, gang. When a homeowner says, you know, my house is, is special. Um, this was in the original series. William Shatner wore this, but it was only used in one episode. It's called the Tholian Web episode. It's basically a space uh, costume, and they expected it to go for six to eight thousand dollars. It actually sold for a hundred and forty-four thousand dollars. Now, what you have to understand is those little colored strips that you see there that's supposed to be like oxygen or something. It's rope. It's rope, painted rope. And it sold for $144,000. The real piece of resistance was a model of one of the ships. Now, this ship was big. It was a big model. It would uh, probably take up the size of one car garage. It was pretty big. But it's a model. It's a model. They expect, and this was the last piece of the auction, they estimated it six to $8,000. The actual hammer price on this uh, Starship was fake. Starship was five hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars. There's some houses in the most houses in the country do not go for that. Now, what's my point in sharing this with the homeowner? When a homeowner says, "Here's the talking points: the item, the cost to produce something has nothing to do with the value." They were model toys for crying out loud. Homeowners improvements have nothing to do with the value of something. The the cost to produce has nothing to do with the value. Second point, talking point, what drove the price for these items was Star Trek. These were one of a kind items is what drove the price. And there were more buyers than the product. So if you own the only four bedroom house in town, if you are the only house, four bedrooms, then you can, it's going to drive the price. So the price of what you put into something, what you spend in something has nothing to do with really the value of the item. It has to do with the demand. And that's the whole point. Um, another technique is the dollar bills where you'd say to a homeowner, listen, if let's say I gave you $101 bills and I say to you, Mr. and Mrs. Hanan, um, if, if I were selling it, for, if I were selling these for 95 cents each, how long would it take to sell 100 one dollar bills at 95 cents each. They probably say mm, pretty quick. Let's say I said 90 cents, a hundred. How long would it take? Well, even quicker. And if I said 85 cents, you'd say the heck with the, the mall, I'll buy them all myself. Now, let's say I take a hundred one dollar bills, they're beautiful, crisp, and clean. And I say, let's go to the mall and sell them for a dollar ten. How long is it going to take us to sell a dollar for a dollar ten? Probably never. And the reason why is because you can't sell a dollar. Uh, for a dollar ten, it, it's worth what it's worth. Now, let's say the homeowner says, "Yeah, but we our house is special. We did all these improvements and da 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 da." Okay, let's say you take two dollar bills. One is beautiful, crisp and clean. The other one is is dirty, nasty, and and disgusting. If you were gonna buy a dollar, they're both worth a dollar. Okay. Which would you buy, the dirty, crumpled, nasty one or the nice, clean, crisp one? And they'd say the nice, clean, crisp one. Of course. My point is this. All the wonderful improvements you did to the house doesn't make the dollar worth more than a dollar. It just means it'll sell before the other dollars. Anyway, so there's the dollar bill technique. Let's continue on. I hope you guys, this is your help and this help you. The other broker said they'll do it for less. I've got a plethora of these, so let me go through when they say the other agent will do it for less. John Ruskin was a philosopher, a writer, a doctor, um, died in, in 1900. He said, there is hardly anything in the world that someone can't make a little worse and sell a little cheaper, and people who consider price alone are this man's lawful prey. See, when, when another agent is saying, I can do it for less, what they're doing is they're not saying they're the best skilled, they're not the best trained. They're saying I'm the cheapest. See, this is what happens when Kmart wants to move a whole bunch of items. They put a blue light on it. They put it in a special bin and say, blue light special. You know what they're attracting? You see all those buyers there? Those buyers are being attracted 
based on the price, not based on the quality of the value. So if when you're looking for a professional to sell your house, do you want the best skilled, the best talented, or do you want the cheapest? Because that adage of you get what you pay for is, is so true when it comes to hiring professionals, whether it's a realtor, a doctor, or a lawyer. You know, when it comes to, if I were going to have a, a doctor or a heart surgery, done, I wouldn't look for the cheapest. I'd want the best skilled. And this is what you should be doing with your most important asset. Here, look, this is an example. This is a lot, eye company, Advanced Eye Centers. They're talking about their skill. Here's another one talking about the LASIK, Dartmouth Medical Center. Here's a doctor who's really skilled at this. If you were going to have a surgeon, surgery done to your eyes to improve your eyesight, would you call this company that's saying, hey, incredible offer, each eye only $499? Would you trust to give that person? They're not advertising that they're the best skilled. They're advertising we're the cheapest. Or how about this one? Hey, we'll do it for $2.99. Uh, this one over here, you get a free gallon at $500, free gas. Listen, you get what you pay for, Mr. and Mrs. Hunter. When people say that we are the cheapest, you know what they're not saying? We're the best skilled. We're the best company. We produce the best results. Buyer beware, I say. You know, it's just the same concept. If you were going from uh, New York to California and you had three ways to travel, you know, you can go, you can fly, you can drive, or you can take a train. Now, what's interesting is each one of these, there's a price involved. The flying would be maybe the most expensive. The car would be the cheapest. But also... It, you're going to, if you're driving there, it's going to take you longer. It's going to be less comfortable. And, and as a matter of fact, if you add it all up, really, is it the cheapest? When you think about the wear and tear costs, the miles that you're putting on the car, the gas, the hotel room and everything else, I don't know. That old adage, you get what you pay for. One thing, let me talk to the power agents for a second. Power agents, we created a form for you because I don't have time to teach everybody. But if you go into the website of the classroom, you'll find the agent comparison chart. And what it does is you create a list of all the things that you do. And, and you tell, and, and of course, you're going to check off all these great things. And when they say we want to talk to BS Real, to, you know, Bob Smith's office, and, and you tell them, well, let's compare what Bob Smith does at a less fee versus what we do. And the idea here is, so for example, you'd say one of the things that a realtor is supposed to do as part of being a realtor is showing a homeowner code of ethics that if they ask for it, that you always have a copy of it. As a matter of fact, here's my copy I always carry for my clients. So you should ask an agent, do they have a copy of the code of ethics? If they don't, I would question what kind of realtor they are. Do they do professional floor plan like we do? Do they do neighborhood open houses? The idea here, power agents, is you put items in that you know you would check off yes, and you know all other agents would probably not check off. Like power agents, you know what the neighborhood open house is. I've taught that before. Most agents don't know what that is. They don't do it. So you list things that's going to make you stand out. John Ruskin also said, when you pay too much, you lose a little. That's it. When you pay... When you, when you pay too much, when you pay too little, you sometimes lose everything because the thing that you bought was incapable to do the very thing it was supposed to do. When you look for the cheapest realtor, when you look for price, that's a problem, Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hunter. Okay. The common law business balance, uh, the common law of business balances prohibits paying a little and getting a lot. It can't be done. You know what? My, my last favorite one on this one here is this is Wolf and Shepherd shoes versus uh, uh, um, Ferragamo shoes. Now, for those of you who don't know, Wolf and Shepherd, if you look at the shoes, they, they look pretty much the same, right? Uh, I, I don't see too much difference to them. You know, the lace is a little different, and, but it kind of looks the same. A Wolf and Shepherd shoe is, is a $170 shoe, a um, pair of shoes. Now, they're Ferragamo shoes. Well, those shoes I know, I, those shoes, they're $1,500. 
Now, the difference is not $1,200 or $1,400. The difference is the Wolf and Shepherd shoe, they're going to last about a year. So you're going to be spending $170 every year where the Ferragamo shoes, there's a lifetime. My point is, Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hunter, you get what you pay for. Sometimes when you buy things based on it's the cheapest, it is not the best skilled. And so you've got to be careful in what you're trying to do. All right. So let's look at the next one here, which is um, I can pay to get on MLS. I can pay a flat fee uh, of, of $500 and get on MLS. My favorite one is the hammer analogy. And here's how the hammer analogy goes. Mr. and Mrs. Hunt, Hunt let's pretend that you decide you're not going to sell the house on your, uh, you're going to sell it on your own. And so what you do, uh, no, let's take, go outside of selling your house. You are, um, let's say you're going to stay here and you want to build an extension onto your house. So what you do is you decide to do it yourself and you go to Home Depot and you buy a hammer and you buy some other tools. Now, let's pretend you go to uh, uh, Home Depot and you buy this a hammer, $500. It's a really expensive hammer. It's a beautiful hammer. It's lightweight. They use it on space shuttles, $500 hammer. And by the way, the reason why you do 500 gang, it's the same price that the discount broker is going to charge the flat fee broker. And you say, well, now, Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, you've got this $500 hammer. You come home and you take your, your $500 hammer and you put it down on the kitchen table. Here's my question. Is that hammer going to jump off the table and build you an extension? No, of course not. And the reason why is because the hammer is merely a tool. You have to actually pick the tool up and use the tool. The tool does not do the job itself. The tool must be used. When you go to these discount brokers and they say, give us $499 and we'll put you on MLS. MLS is merely a tool. The tool in of itself does not get the job done. You get what you pay for. Now watch this, Mr. Miss. And let's pretend that you decide that you are going to hire a contractor uh, to, to build you the extension. You've got one contractor who uh, just got out of contracting school, if that exists. Like, they don't have a team. They are doing it themselves. They're juggling a lot of things. Um, you give that single, they're not licensed and body. You give that contract that, that hammer, they're going to produce a result. Now, let's say you take the same hammer, but you give it to a construction company. They've been doing it for years. They're licensed. They're bonded. They got a crew. They've been, bu they, they've been building extensions for you. They wrote the book on how to build extensions. You take that hammer and you give it to them, you're going to get a different result. The same hammer will produce two different results because the hammer does not produce the result. It's how you use the tool. MLS is merely a tool, Mr. and Mrs. Hana Hana. How you use the tool is what's important. And my company, we wrote the book on how to use MLS, brokers, open house, public go have a yard site to get your house sold for the most money so you can get to Florida and get to where you need to go. And that's the end of that. Okay, so that is... Um, some of the metaphors and analogies that I wanted to go with you through with you guys. Now, what we're going to do is I want to talk to the guests for a second because we're going to do something special for the guests. And then I'm going to open up to questions. OK, now, if you are a guest um, and you're considering, you know, what is this thing to be a power agent? I've got something special for you that I want to show you. So. And then we're going to go to questions. So I want you to, and if you want to start writing your questions, you can start writing them now. When I'm done going through this part, I will um, go to the questions. This is, if you're a guest, we want to invite you to become a power agent. And everything that you see on the screen right now, the listing appointment, 100 ways to get listing appointments. Um, if you're a new agent, a starter kit. Uh, the 10 best dialogues for getting listing appointments, how to do open houses, which is a great way to generate listing leads. A lot of people don't realize that. We have a whole webinar just on that. Anyway, we're going to give that to you as soon as you sign up. Like you don't have to find it in the classroom. It's in the classroom, but we're going to just email it to you 
uh, it's worth almost two thousand dollars just for trying the program for five bucks. We're gonna send you two thousand dollars of gifts. Come on, this is a, a win win, no lose scenario for you. There's no long term contracts. You don't like the program, you cancel. We don't, you know, it's fine. Now, let me explain how the program works. First of all, every Monday, we have our coaching calls. Now, the Monday coaching call is not like the webinar. I can actually talk to you on the coaching calls. Um, you take yourself off mute. We can role play. I do record it. We do stream it to Facebook so you can listen to it later. We actually pull the audio out of it so that way you can listen to the audio as well. You know, one of our power agents, Susie, she said, I felt a little insecure with listings, but Daryl's program has taught me how to be a great lister. I've gotten more listings the past three months than I did all last year. This truly is a great program. So this is a uh, this is how to make money in listing and selling real estate. That's what this is. Number two is we have what's called Talent Tuesday and Brainstorm Thursday. So they're two separate things. Um, the Talent Tuesday will usually interview a top power agent and they're very generous and they're sharing their ideas or we'll uh, interview an industry expert on something that they offer and help power agents in their business. The Thursday brainstorming sessions we do every 60 days where power agents is kind of like show and tell. The power agents get on the call, not all of them, but usually we get about 150 that come to share their ideas. We then take those ideas. This is my favorite, by the way. And we put it into a nothing but meat of links and ideas. There's no fluff. You see the numbers there, bada bing, bada bing, bada bing. Like just idea after idea. And we put it into a nice e-guide for the power agents. I'll tell you that alone is worth the program, honestly. Now, there's all these webinars on demand that we have for you as well. Like this session is being recorded and you can listen to it later. Uh, here's just an example. So there's, I don't know how many we have now, 70 trainings. And then you get a copy of the slides. So like power agents are going to get a copy of today's slides that they can uh, edit as well. So it's not, it's fully edible stuff. Marty Sorrentino, one of our power agents, I was a brand new agent with no income because of what Daryl taught me. Uh, that year, I closed $15 million in production. Daryl saved my financial life. I remember Mar Marty, he actually came to me and says, Daryl, I just gave you my last few dollars because if I can't make it with you, then I got to get out of real estate. And, <laughs> and obviously that didn't happen. He became a top producer. Um, there's over 60 different marketing uh, scripts and flyers and checklists. There is so much in this program. Um, Kristen said, I have sent out those letters from the classroom and I've generated business from it. Thank you. Great material. I'll show you what it looks like. When you log into the portal of the power program, you go to classroom. That's where all the magic is. And then in the classroom, you're going to see all of these topics of real estate. So let's say you need help with farming and self-promotion. When you click on that, you're going to see all of these marketing materials. And the marketing materials are super easy to customize because what we've decided to do as a company, instead of creating a whole other software for you to learn, we use everything is created in one of two platforms. It's either in Microsoft Word, right? So Word, you can easily edit for letters and stuff, or it's PowerPoint. And everybody has access to these two softwares, so we make it super easy for you. Let's the searchability we have is similar to um, Google. So let's say you type in, I need something on Fizbo's. Bada bing, everything that's Fizbo related will show up for you, whether it's a, a training session, a flyer, a checklist, whatever. Um, let me ask you a question for the guests. If this program could generate, I don't know, one sale a month from this point forward that you wouldn't have otherwise, just one sale a month. I don't know how much a sale is worth to you. Is it worth uh, $2,000, 5000 10000 Even if we go with $2,000, let's go with the lowest possible number. Probably three ninety seven dollars a month would be so worth it, right? Because you're more than doubling your money. Well, we don't charge three ninety seven, dollars but two ninety seven, dollars I think it would be a no-brainer for you. And if we look at other training programs, they're actually much more than that. Um, well, if we did 197, I think then it's just given, right? We should just do it. Well, it's actually none of those. It's only $47 a month. There's no contract. So to recap, 
Right now, if you wanted to become a power agent, you can cancel any time. There's no, you're not locked in. It's month to month. The first 30 days to kick the tires, it's only $5. You will have unrestricted, complete access, just like the regular power agent. So that way you get a real feel for the program. And you're going to get the bonuses emailed to you right away. So everything that's on the screen, the listing appointment, the guides, the checklist, over almost $2,000 you're basically buying for $5. Now, what we're gonna do is I wanna go back to you and I wanna go back to training and answer your questions. So Julie is gonna read your questions and then I'm gonna go to you. So before we do that, Julie, I just wanna address the one thing, why is this such a great deal? People always ask that. I will tell you, um, the, uh, the reason why is because we we know once we win your your heart and your head, you're going to want to be a power agent. And, and, and what I want you to do is because, listen, is sometimes there's always that question, is this a good deal? How is it? So we're trying to make it easy for you to decide. You know, you don't have to decide on 47. You don't have to decide for the rest of your life. It's really just five dollars. You That's all you have to decide right now. And if you think about after this webinar, you are probably going to spend $5 on something, a <laughs> bad haircut, <laughs> it's one of my favorites, or a drive through or a bad box of wine. And the difference with those $5 expenditures is that once you uh, consume it and use it, you've lost it. This is $5 into yourself. And the possibility, what don't kill off the possibility of what being a power agent can maybe do for your career. It may not do anything. You know, we may not be able to help you. You know, um, you know, 30 days goes by, you wasted five bucks. That's possible. But what if it does? What if that whatever's been holding you back, you can have a breakthrough in that? What if you could have the career that you really want when you became a when you became a real estate agent? What if? I think a $5 is a really good risk for you uh, to discover the answer to that question. Okay, with that said, let's do some coaching, Julie. By the way, Power Agents, if you want to add anything, you want to pay it forward, if you want to share your experience or tell the guest what you think, should they become a Power Agent, you know, this is your opportunity to make a difference in somebody's career and their life, perhaps. All right, so uh, with that said, Julie, let's go to the questions, okay? Awesome sauce. So Curtis and Dana have basically the same question, and that is, um, if someone wants to buy my house, where will I move? Because inventory is so low. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, so if they, if they, here's here's how you do that. So I will say, in this hot market, I, I would lean towards somebody finding their home first, where they want to move. As a, which I've never said in my 30 years, because the reason why it's okay to do that now is because the market is so hot. If a homeowner puts their house on the market, I mean, I'm going to give you another solution, but if a homeowner puts their house on the market, depending where you are in the country, it's probably going to sell in 48 hours. So selling the program, selling the house is not a problem. And when you, and when they go to buy a house, they can buy a house without a contingent on them selling. So they can still be a strong offer. And I'm not teaching that today. That's the negotiating session, which we've addressed that. But if a buyer, if a buyer has a house to sell and it's not sold yet, that should not impede them in getting their offer accepted if it's presented the right way. So that's another training. Okay. Um, so if they put their house, so, but let's say they do put their house on the market before they find something and they want to control the scenario. All they have to do is tell the buyers, listen, if you want to buy my house, here's my price. And I'm not closing in two months or three months. I'm going to want a closing that's four or five months because I need that extra 30, 60, 90 days to find my new house. So that's how you can do that. That's how you manage it. Next question, Julie. Yes. Um, do you advise to do a two-step listing appointment like we did way back in the day? No, no. Um, we don't teach two step when you, when you take the power program, one of the cl classes we have, and I'll show you, all right, let me just do this. So let me, let me hit escape here and, um, let me go to, give me a second. Um, so if I go to classroom, I want to show everybody something. Um, if I go to webinars on demand, um, these are all the training sessions that we've taught, right? So um, if you look at 
there's a couple of ways to do this, but one of the sessions is how to feel crazy confident on a listing appointment. So this session actually goes through the whole listing appointment. And when you click on it, there's the training and then there's a copy of the slides. So power agents, you get the slides for every training I ever do, right? And um, I forgot what the question was, Julie. What was the question again? Two-stop listings. <laughs> yes, two-stop listings. I am not a fan of two-stop listings whatsoever. Um, there's a way to do listing appointments in one step. And that training will teach you how to do that. Next question, Julie. Awesome. But while you're there, um, uh, one of the questions was, can I use your slides in my listing presentation? Like today you had the, um, like the seven concerns, that kind of thing. Can they use your slides in their listing presentation? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what'll happen here, um, what'll happen here is that um, you can get, you're going to get a copy of today's slides, right? Let me just go to that. And, um, and what you can do, and by the way, there's even some extra material bonus material in these slides. Um, let me go like this. So, um, well, but yes, you can actually, what we're going to do is we're going to, these seven concerns, let me show it here. Here they are. So, uh, and now you'll notice, now watch this. You're going to get a copy of these. If let's say you don't like, do you see how I'm moving that? Let's say you don't like um, number seven. You only like six of them. Watch what happened. I just deleted it. And let's say you want to create your own. Um, so now you say number seven is uh, uh, Daryl is the best. Okay. <laughs> so that's, you can that's how much control you have over all of our slides. You can delete commas, sentences, add stuff. So it's, it's, it's so easy. It's not like some of these other companies' softwares where you have to like learn a new software and you can't edit some things and da, 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 da. Next question. Right. So that answered one of my other questions was, is it customizable? And that's true of like newsletters, letters, flyers. Like we have postcards. We have all of marketing material for you guys as well, not just presentation materials. Absolutely. Um, Amy says, what about order? First or last to present your listing presentation? I did just go... First, and I think I blew the competition out of the water, but I think maybe I should have been last. Do you have an opinion? No, no, you're always better to do first. You're always better to do first. Um, and um, just be really good on the follow-up because if, because uh, I'll tell you why, because it, I, I, I understand what you're saying. And um, no, you want to always be first. That's all I can tell you. I, I I don't know how else to explain it. If 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 you try to be strategic and say, well, you know, to plan being later or something, if I came in before you, you wouldn't get in there. So it just means you have you're, you're almost there. You're not strong enough to blow out where they want to interview other people. That's all that means. So you're almost there. Like if you feel good and you did a great listing appointment. Um, you just didn't handle the objection on that appointment. Well, we want to interview. We have some other interviews set up. We want to compare it to other. Then you just got to get better at handling the objection. Well, when you're interviewing other agents, what is it that you're hoping to find? Um, they'll say what they say. Uh, then you'll handle that or you'll say, what didn't I convey? What, what would I need to do now for you to pull the trigger? Because I really want to get you guys on the market right now because today's Wednesday. You know, when you watch this, when you think about it, Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, real estate is not a 24-7 business for buyers. Buyers, the qualified buyers, the ones that you want to sell to probably are, are, are a couple that are both working nine to five, maybe longer. The, the best time for those financially qualified buyers to look at houses on the weekends, okay? So, and what we have right now, we're in April. School season starts in October, April. So we've got May, June, July, and then school starts. So we got three months, but it takes two months to close a transaction. So right now, one month, right now, the hot super buyers that are ready to pay top dollar because real estate doesn't go up equally. It goes up and surges, and it's always this time of year. We only have really the next 30 days is our prime time. Now, it's not 30 days because what I say, buyers, they only go on the weekends, the qualified ones, when you want. So we don't have 30 days. We only have four weekends. Today's Wednesday. If, if I want to get this thing going now so that way I can plug it into the MLS, get the ads written and everything else so we don't lose this weekend. If we go past today, 
Now you're giving me only three weekends to really sell your house for top dollar. That's how you do it. Okay. Did that help, Jewel? It did. Make sure you make the face afterwards. Make sure you make, <laughs> make the face. <laughs> I love it. Daryl, where do I get the slides? Oh, I guess we will. You're right on that, that page. So how convenient. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the so you're going to get, oh, so what's going to happen for, yeah, for, yeah. If you're a current power agent, you'll see where it says click here for today's slides. So the slides are already there for you. Okay. And the, and power agents, you're going to see, um, extra slides. Like I couldn't get through all the slides today. So, um, you know, I'll show you, um, so like there's the chef technique, the bad experience. So there's other, there's the nine dots. So there's a lot of content that I still didn't get to today, but power agents, you're going to get those slides as well today. Um, so that's that. Now, um, the actual recording will be in this spot here, like this one here, how to make slide broadcast your next go-to marketing tool. That was awesome, by the way. Um, um, today's webinar will be in this spot. So this is always the most recent webinar. Go ahead, Julie, next question. Do you have a listing presentation, an actual presentation we can use? Yeah, yeah. So let me show you how that works. When you go to classroom, just so you guys know, we're the listing and selling training company, which uh, like, I'm not going to mention my other colleagues' names, but a lot of them will talk about marketing or social media. That seems to be the, this thing, right? But, but not a lot of uh, trainers out there are teaching how to actually do a listing appointment, how to get listings belly to belly when you're with a, a seller. That's what we teach, right? So that's who we are. So this is all this one chapter that you're seeing right now. This is all the possible flyers or checklists or marketing material that you can use on a listing appointment. Now, what you're going to get emailed. Oh, that's I'm looking at some of my favorite stuff going through here. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, there's iBuyer. So uh, we have training on how to deal with the iBuyer stuff. Um, there's the Power Agent Code. There's so much great stuff in here. But the actual listing appointment, where is it, Julie? Oh, here, video, listing conversation, presentation, tutorial. So this actually shows you how to go through a listing appointment. Right, what so kind of face is that, Julie? Do you, do you <laughs> see this face? What the hell face is that in that video? What the hell was I thinking? I, I know where I was. I was in, in Florida. I was sweating. It was so hot. You see how my thigh is? Yes. Anyway, I was exhausted and I had a, a moment of inspiration. So there's the listing presentation slides and there's a video that goes with it as well. Okay. So and by the way, we have a buyer presentation as well. Yeah. All right. Um, you, yeah. Rady says, I went to school with a realtor. Oh, how do I handle? I went to school with a realtor and we've been friends forever. And yet seller took an appointment with me so I could tell her what I think is a good sales price and what I think of her house. So the I've got a friend in the business, but they're still soliciting information from. Yeah. So what you want to do is how you win a, a homeowner over is not by continuously giving them free stuff. OK, so. I, I give them, you know, it's like when, when, uh, when a cleaners or some kind of business, they want to win your business, they may give you a free whatever or a free coupon, but it's not in its per, uh, perpetuity, meaning it's one time. So if you want to, if, if after you do a listing appointment, somebody reach out to you and you give them one last piece of advice, that's it. Um, now with this particular, like this person, they want to know the price and you got to explain to them though, that, it's the, the, the price is based on the skill of the person that you'll hire. The pro, one of the good things about hiring somebody who um, you don't have an emotional connection to, it's easier for you to be the boss and for you to conduct your business that way. It's never a good idea to do business with people that you know personally. If you value the friendship more, then it's better to not hire them as your realtor. Because now the relationship is no longer a friendship. It's now a working thing. And that's going to mess it up for both of you. So you keep friends as your friends. And how you keep your friends your friends is you don't do business with your friends. Now, um, um, if they're not that friendly and you don't mind, like, well, then you should hire the best skill. Then that should not be part of your decision process. So that's what you do. You hire the best skill, not your best friend. Because being best friend isn't to make them the best professional. <laughs> they're your best friend because they're your best friend. You need to hire the best professional. And so I want you to look at between their skill set and my skill set, do you feel they're the better one? And if they are, then hire them. Although you're putting at risk 
the friendship. Is that, I hope I handled that, Julie. No, absolutely. Uh, Darlene, you just showed this live broadcasting webinar. Darlene said she loved it. It was great stuff. Tansy says, uh, don't forget to tell them about incredible discounts on vendors. That's right, Tansy. All right. So thank you, Power Agents, for helping. So <laughs> by the way, guests, I just want you to notice something. We have Power Agents who are here learning, and they care about you becoming and sharing the love, and they're telling you, uh, you know, that, but Daryl has this and Daryl has that. So you've got other agents wanting you to become a power agent because it's almost like they're in the water and the water is beautiful. Come on in, jump in here with us. So to, to just to answer that, well, I mean, so what did she say about, I'm sorry, I, I, I just lost it. What would, what did she just bring out that was so great about the, the vendors? Program? Don't forget to the tell about the vendor coupons that we have. Yeah. So let me show you the vendors. So there is, I, I'm, I'm all right. I, I can't show you the codes because there's codes there, but we have, um, we have all these vendors that power agents get discounts, whether it's Sly Broadcast, whether it's Box Brownie, Cold Directory, Red X. Uh, we've negotiated exclusive things for our power agents that nobody else gets anywhere else. And, um, you know, one of my favorite ones actually is also here. It's called justlisted.social. And what this company does, is it it helps promote you or promote your listings on Facebook. And we cut such a great deal uh, for power agents with them as well. So there's just a lot of, you know what, the $47 a month based on what we've negotiated is probably, I don't know, thousands of dollars of annual savings. So the power program, in a sense, doesn't cost anything when you use those vendors as well. So Absolutely. next question, Julie. Ramel said, I just joined. Yay. Welcome, Ramel. Congratulations. Yay. Mary Buttendeck. Read Mary's. Let me see what she's saying. It's a fabulous program and will help you tons each and every day as a realtor. Daryl and his team are the very best. So sign up today. I love it, Mary. You Thank should you, work Mary. in the community because Mary is just part of a huge community where you really do feel like you are part of something special. Like nobody feels left behind, you know, Yes, in, yes. Our, in our community. If, if agents, if you're having struggles. Well, here, read that, Julie, just interrupt you. Uh, you should read some, because there's a lot of love here from the power agents. Let's just go through these so we can get to the question. Uh, Darlene, I love how we can go back and listen to the recordings anytime and see the slides. Sometimes I miss Monday's call or I want to rehear it. I need to improve time blocking for prospecting. Darlene, you're an awesome power agent. We love having you. Uh, let's see. Talk, Talk about, about using the badging of the power agent and what that means for an agent. Thank you. Well, that's good. That must have I'm sorry. I messed up your name, but, um, yeah. So what they're saying is that, so power agent is a registered trademark that we own in the real estate space. We own it, not just in the United States. We own it worldwide. We actually applied for all countries, um, and, um, and so what that means is that only power agents can use that designation. Now, part of that is you get a certificate showing that you're a power agent. There's an actual code of ethics that power agents have. Um, there is, this is our wall of, of super power agents. So every month, um, uh, two people get the honor to go onto this wall based on their participation, uh, as a power agent. Um, there's also the logo that you can use. And so when you become like uh, in the speaking world, we have the National Speakers Association. We have what's called the CSP, Certified Speaking Professional. It takes five years minimum before you can even apply to get that. There's a committee. It's only 2% of all the speakers in the entire world have this designation. I'm a CSP. So the same is true with power agent. Only less than 1% of all realtors in the United States are power agents. So that's a brand designation that they can distinguish with a code of ethics. And I, I could go into the code of ethics. It's really, we wrote this uh, with the consumer in mind that they understand. And I don't, I'm not going to read through all these because it would take too long, especially the first one, but I'm just going to read the heading. Um, and article one is integrity, representation, professionalism, business practices, respecting uh, confidentiality and core principles. So it's really, um, 
uh, power agents are about serving, not selling, about coaching and not closing, and it communicates that. And so it's a proud badge, I think, for power agents to have, and, and that's the culture that we've created here. So, okay, next question, Julie. Um, another agent will take less commission than you. That's an objection. Did you handle? I think you did handle that, yes? Yeah, so... So, um, so the other, the other agent will take less commission. Uh, I didn't handle that objection. So here's how you would handle that one. There are, there are other way, there are other recordings on more objections, but I'll tell you how to handle that one. Now, um, I would say to a homeowner, Mr. Or Mrs. Hanahana, what we've learned in real estate, uh, at least in our company or in my business that that in order for us to do everything that we want to do for a client, the open houses, the advertising, everything else, plus plus make a profit, because keep in mind, I'm in this to make a profit. That six percent is the minimum that to have both things happen, to spend it on marketing for the client and for me to make a profit, six percent is a number. Now, if if any agent takes less than six it's going to come from one of two places. It's either going to come from their profit margin. So they're going to take less profit. Now, here's the thing about that, though, Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana. That profit is the money that that agent uses to feed their family. So my concern is if an agent is willing to take money from their family, the money they use to feed their family, how quick are they going to be to get Give away your money when it comes to negotiating a deal for, with a buyer. So if they can't fight for their family, that, that concerns me. I don't think any agent would do that or operate that way. I think they would give you the same integrity and fight for themselves. And, and so I don't think that's where the money's coming from, which means the other place is the marketing. So if an, so in other words, if they're taking less than six, They've got to make that money up somewhere. If it's not from their family, it's going to be marketing overhead. That means advertising, mailings, open houses. Now, they may not, it may not sound like it to you that they're cutting there. Like they're going to say, we're doing open houses, we're doing advertising. But what they may not be telling you is that maybe they're only going to do one open house a month, whereas with me, I'll do it every weekend if I feel that's the best way to do it. If it means advertising, maybe me taking a full page ad out somewhere, do a full color brochure or doing a drone. Maybe they won't do the drone because they can't afford it because there's no money in it to do. You follow what I'm saying? You've heard that expression. You get what you pay for. There's nothing more true than here in the real estate profession. That's how I'd handle that one. Wow. Next question, Julie. That's awesome. And by the way, uh, Chris, if you go into webinars on demand, he did a whole give yourself a raise um, commission webinar. So it's, it's an hour plus of just handling commission, which I know has been stressful for a lot of you. Yeah. So let me, let me show you that. So what I just did there, Chris, if I go control, find uh, search, then fine. Okay. There it is. Find commission. Oh. Whoop. I spelled commission wrong. There it is. So there it is. Give yourself, Oh, it's right there. Is that what you just said, Julie? Yeah. I just did it two weeks ago. There you go. Give yourself a raise, get more listings at higher commission. So if you go to that session, that's one hour on just handling the commission objection. Okay. Exactly. And which means, but by the way, what I just did, there are always metaphors and analogies. So you don't have to memorize the scripts. Now, the one I just did is a little bit more complicated because there's two levels in that about cutting here and there. But there's some, there's some techniques in there that are, are so simple and so quick and so easy to handle the commission objection. I'm trying to download the slides now so I can show you. All right, go ahead, Julie. Next question. Um, yes, we've got Grace, who's about to go on a listing presentation for a beautifully built home. It's lovely, but they were seem to want almost twice the price of what has sold in the area over the past year. These sellers do need to move and downsize. How do I handle concerns and objections for such a listing consultation? Yeah. So here's how you do that. It go, I, I covered it a little bit earlier. I'll, I'll cover it again. What you do is what I want you to do. What's her name, Julie? Grace. Grace. Grace, what I want you to do is, uh, let me just get off this. Grace, what I want you to do is bring your, your CMA, but I want you to bring your comps printed out, the full report. You know how in your MLS you can do the, the, the one page full report. Okay. And what I want you to do is, is the best way to present a CMA 
is to validate your CMA before you present it. And this is how you do it. You go, Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hunter, let me, let me explain what happens. Sorry. Um, what, what, let's say you, you sell your house, right? For, for $500,000 more than what it's worth. You have somebody who's willing to pay that. Okay. The buyer, what they're going to do is they're not going to pay all cash. Most likely you're going to have a buyer that's going to put 10, 20%, maybe 5%. But let's say they put down even 25%. You, they're going to go to the bank for the other 75%. So when you think about it, the bank and the buyer are in partnership, but the bank has more involved, more invested in it. So what the bank does to protect themselves is to make sure this is a wise investment. They can't have a portfolio of bad properties. That happened many times in the past and banks are very leery about having a portfolio of bad assets. So they send out a bank appraiser. Now the appraiser is going to look at the comps and they look at what other properties have sold for. And that's how they determine what the house is worth. Now here's the problem. If let's say you sell your house for $500,000 more than what it's worth, right? Buyer pays you that, you go to contract, you think everything's hunky-dory. A week goes by, two weeks go by, a month goes by. What happens is the bank sends out an appraisal, the bank does all the research, they look at all of the homes that have sold similar to yours, and what they discover is that, oh, hang on a second, this house is not worth what the buyer paid. So the bank appraiser tells the bank, the bank tells the buyer, the buyer tells us the deal falls apart. You give back the money to the bank, to the buyer, and now you've got to start all over again. We don't want this to happen, do we? Okay. Now, the good thing is I, what I'm about to show you is the exact comps that that appraiser is going to go look at. So we're getting a little behind the scenes before any of this happens. As a matter of fact, let me show you something, Mary. Mr. and Mrs. Hana Hana, do you see this letter here? This letter, this is a letter from a bank appraiser asking me for comps <laughs> because they ask because I have access to what they're going to look at before they even look at it. By the way, gang, you know how bank appraisers sometimes you help them and you give them comps? Tell them, listen, can you give me a letter just so I have it for the file that you're requesting comps from the property? I'm going to pull something together for you. You ask two or three bank appraisers, so you just have that for the listing appointment to do what I just did. Okay. So, Mr. and Mrs. Hunter, I got the banks. They're coming to me asking me for the comps because as a realtor, I'm making the comps. So, let's. what I'm going to show you now, Mary and John, is the very same data comps that that bank appraiser is going to look at before they do. Let's look at them now. And then what you do is you show the, the seller, here's a house for 500000 This is a house for, I'm sorry, 400000 Here's one for four twenty nine. dollars Here's one for three seventy nine. dollars Here's another one for, for four fifty two. dollars All right, now, Mr. and Mrs. Hana Hana, if you're the bank appraiser and you're looking at these comps, if you were an appraiser, what number would you come up with? And if the homeowner says six hundred. dollars Help me out here. Where, where, do you, where do you see 600? I didn't see 600. Where, where do you see that? Yeah, but my house is nice. Sir. We have the 14 karat gold toilet bowl. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah, but that's not how it works. See, because that appraiser's got to give it to the bank. The bank never saw your house. They don't care about the 14 karat gold. You know what they care about? Look what they look at. How many bedrooms? How many baths? What's the square footage? That's all they care about. They don't care about what you spent on it. You know that money you spent on the 14 karat gold toilet? Did you enjoy the 14 karat gold toilet bowl? Well, your enjoyment is the only return on that investment. Because for the bank, they only care about square footage, bedrooms, and baths. So we, we, we can't. This number, you're, you're doomed to fail. It ain't ever going to appraise. I, I wish it could be because I work on commission. The higher you get, the more I get. But this is what we're looking at here. So let's look at the numbers again. I want you to put on the hat of you being a bank appraiser and look at these numbers. And you tell me what number would you come up with? That's how you do it. How was that, Julie? Dang, I love that. <laughs> that was awesome. That was a long answer. I'm sorry that that was the answer, but that's that's the right way to do it. So. Susie asked, can I really ask questions on the coaching call? <laughs> yeah, you can. I'm, I'm sorry. These webinars are one way and Julie's got to read it for you. No, power agents, do me a favor. Tell that agent, can you talk to me on the Monday coaching calls? Tell, tell it in the chat there, please. All right, it's, next question. And what time are those calls? Oh, what time are those calls? 
The calls are at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Now, when do they end? (laughs) Well, she's laughing because when we first started this program, I made a commitment that everybody's question get answered. So back in the early days, the question, you know, we get, it'd be an hour. Now I, I have to have a porta potty next to my desk because now they go two, sometimes three hours long. So be because we still have the same commitment, I don't get off the call, call until everybody is taken care of. So that's, that's the answer to that. So it's All group right. coaching, but it feels like one-on-one because you can literally get off, take yourself off mute, talk to Joe one-on-one. We role play, we problem solve. Like it's, you get this every week, but in a more personal way. Yes. You can talk to me. Um, okay. What? How do you handle you don't sell in my neighborhood or price range? Oh, that's good. Oh, that's a good. Oh, boy. That's a, that's a great question. You love Stump the Coach. <laughs> I love it because it, rem- it it's fun because then I remember techniques that I haven't taught in years, and this is one of them. Mr. and Mrs. Hana Hana. When you list with a real estate company in your area, that's actually not the best thing to do. Here's why. When you think about how houses are promoted on on the internet and in the newspaper and all flyers, all that stuff, all that buyer sees is where is the house located? What's the address? Listed by? Listed by? They don't care where the real estate company exists, you see. So if you've got, if you list with a broker in, um, in, in, uh, that lists only in, in your town, you're going to get buyers that are just from that town coming to look at property in that town, which is limited marketing. Now, because I'm not in this town, here's what happens. We have other clients in these other towns. I call them the sister towns. And sometimes we have buyers that come in on one of the sister town properties, but that property doesn't work for them. Maybe the price or something else. So then I bring them to you. My point is the fact that we're not in this town is actually giving you more exposure to more buyers. That's why you should never list with a broker in your own town. You want to do it on the outskirts so you get more exposure. Does that make sense? I love it. Uh, so, uh, Louise says, we ask Daryl burning questions each week and all questions are addressed. Thank you. Darlene said on this week's, I loved how Daryl handled the home, uh, the coming soon property. And instead of it was doing a yard sale in the neighborhood, <laughs> we did switch that one up, Darlene. You're right. <laughs> we did. We did. That was, that was problem solving 101 for sure. Um, Joe, I would like you to just show them that we have, uh, all of our marketing materials are also in Spanish. If you could. Oh, okay. That. So when you go to, um, let's go to, let's go to farming. Cause the farming tab has a lot of marketing materials in it. And we had a question if newsletters are extras, uh, an extra cost. So I don't know. Nope, no extra. Nothing's extra. So, so here's a, here's an example, right? So the 184 things that you do, by the way, this is one of the things that you get when you sign up immediately. So you'll see here, it says, um, the, the Spanish, I should have clicked on that one. Actually, that's too big of a book. Why did I do that? Um, 20 flyer, 26 reasons FISBO should not sell themselves. So let me, um, let me click on the Spanish version. And now I, I've tied up the, hang on. Okay, so I'm opening up the 26 reasons why uh, a FISBO should not be a FISBO. And it's opening up on my other monitor. Hang on a second. So... On anything that you would give to a civilian, a buyer or seller, we have the English version and we have the Spanish version. Here's the 26 reasons why um, something, and I don't know what any of this says. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so, um, but now watch this. If Let's say you don't like number 12. Watch what I do. Bing, I just deleted number 12. And let's say you want to put something else there in English. Daryl is the best. That's how easy this is. So you can edit everything. You can edit a period. You can edit a comma. It doesn't matter. So you have full editing control. Okay. Um, next question, Julie. Well, and and on that note too, every single piece can be used in a multi-faceted um, way. So you can take one newsletter and 
create a, a blog post. You can create social media posts from it. You can put it in an email. You can you can print it and send it. So every one piece is you can use in so many different ways, which is great because multi-layer marketing is a smart thing to do. Yep. Um, and it's not any extra. Like the, the, the guides are not extra. The newsletters are not extra. It's all part of your program. Um, John asked, is the $5 full access or is that limited? Full access. access. Perfect. Uh, well, Jay, you know what you can do, John, for five dollars? You can go in here and download every piece of material and then cancel. <laughs> you could, you uh, literally, you could do that. Now there's seven hundred pieces, so you're going to have to make a career out of it. That's number one. Number two, you're going to miss out on a lot of other stuff. But we give you full access. Is my point. Um, I'm going to show you something that Julie was just talking about. So. One of the guides we have, because we have a lot of guides, one of them is the seven risks that homeowners take when they choose to sell their own home. And what you can do, and let me just show you this, uh, how we design things, they're like books, okay? Um, so they're pretty impressive. Um, again, everything is either in PowerPoint or Microsoft Word. So here is the book. It's got introduction, failing to prepare the home properly, failing to market the home properly. And I want you to see how friggin' beautiful. I'm sorry that I said that, but I'm, I, I have such an incredible team. You know, we have um, I'm going to show you our team because but in just a second. But what you can do is that you can actually copy this. If I hit copy and I could actually put this in, in, in Microsoft, in, in Facebook and create a post, you see. So you can use all of our stuff, multiple purposes, power, uh, uh, um, a mailing piece, a listing appointment piece, uh, a newsletter uh, to email to people uh, on a Facebook post, et cetera. Um, now, let me show you one other thing, because this is important. You all know this. Um, if I go to uh, our team, this is how our company works. This is Julie, who you hear uh, in the in the background. There's our vice president, Sarah. There's uh, our, our ponder of possibilities, April. She's my wife. She's uh, actually we used to call a director. Or hold it a second because she's the, she's a realtor, and she usually says, "Wait a second, Daryl. I don't know if we could do that." Or like she's our check on it. So she's really awesome. There's our design guru. Anyway, here's my point. These people, they work for you for $47 a month. These people are designing stuff, marketing stuff, coaching stuff. This is what you're getting also. And I don't say this enough or promote this enough. I talk more about the bells and whistles of the website and the flyers and the coaching with me. But this is who you also, you have a team working for you for 47 bucks a month. You won't find any anything like this anywhere in real estate. And we are raising the prices, by the way. But when we raise the price this year, anybody that gets in at this price, you're locked in. We never, we're not like Netflix. Netflix, they raised my price. I got, I got upset. I'm like, hey, I helped you get where you are. So, so <laughs> that's what companies do. We don't do that. When you're a power agent at this price, when we go up to $129 and, and we start raising it, you'll always be at the $47 as long as you're a power agent. So, all right, next question, Julie. I love that you said that because you've got Gail's face there. He also often says that Gail is like the the union foreman. He, she fights so hard for all of you. It's amazing. Yeah, she's she's a, a, she's not on the call now, right? No. And Gail's an animal. If she, <laughs> she is, man, if she, she, she's, she getting, get nasty with me. She'd be like, no, no, Daryl, you can't do that to the power agent. I'm like, why not? We could do, no, no, no. She, yeah. She is like the foreman. She fights for power agents. You guys have no idea behind the scenes as she keeps us in check. All right. Next question. Uh, Joseph is a new agent. I see more established agents bringing a suite of services to the table, i.e. dumpster, cleaning, staging, offering to buy the listing. If it doesn't mm. sell, what, if anything, can a new agent do in response or to be proactive. Oh, first of all, we're loving up on you because we love new agents. Um, and this community is amazing for new agents, but go ahead. Nate. The reason why we love new agents is because quite frankly, um, any of the experienced agents, we feel like we have to unbrainwash them from a scripted approach, hard sell approach, uh, closing. We, we, our culture is not that. It's what we said. Power agents don't sell people. They serve people. Power agents don't close people. They coach people. That's the motto of power agents. So new salespeople, they already have an innocent 
um, innocence about them, about wanting to serve and contribute to people. And so they're easier for us to work with because we don't have to unbrainwash them to stop thinking like a salesperson. Um, so all you need to do to answer your question is you need to master the ability to communicate what you can do as a licensed agent. The fact that you're new, you should not have that give you less confidence because your state gave you a license that says you are legally qualified to help people in the transfer of property. So you've earned the right to be in front of that homeowner. You've earned the right to be with that, that buyer. What you'll learn with us is how to speak from that confidence without memorized scripts using metaphors and analogies. So um, anyway, just join the program and we'll have you up and running in, in the next 30 days. Next and question, so We Julie. have a lot of vendor tools too, like Box Browning, that kind of thing, which we have, we've got tremendous discounts for. And that gives you the tools that some of these senior agents aren't even using because they're not willing to adopt new technologies and new right. tools, and it makes you, you know, it makes you have, you're on the same playing field. Right. Exactly. And we bring in, I mean, part of what we do for you guys too, is we bring in experts from, from other uh, industries and then we cut deals with them. Right. So just social, just, um, just listed dot social is one red X is another one RPR, which is actually free to realtors um, that a lot of realtors don't realize that. But um, like last week, we had uh, not last week, this week, um, we had a slide broadcast, which is a vendor that we absolutely love. We negotiated free 150 minutes of, of this technology. There's no contract. Okay. So we we bring to you guys incredible uh, tools as well. So it's not just the training, but it's the it's the listing and selling tra here. Kirby is another one. Curbio is an incredible vendor, man, where they actually will repair a property that needs repair. It doesn't matter how much repair. If they just need a couple of uh, light switches done or if they need the whole extension. And what Curbio will do is they'll front the money, meaning they'll do the repairs and the homeowner doesn't pay until closing. <laughs> so if you've got a property that needs about 10 grand in, in uplift, a facelift, they'll lay out the 10 grand due to work and, and it's it's incredible deal. Now, they're not in every part of the country. They're only in certain cities, but a lot of cities. Anyway, they're one of our power vendors. Anyway, we, the, the program we is dedicated training specific for, for new agents as well. We've got e-guide for you guys to get started. Our team is always there. If you can show them the chat real quick, too. Um, our, we've got our team is standing by to ask answer any questions you might have. I, I know our power agents have already put notes in there that anytime they ask a question, we are there for them. So here's how the chat works. You, you click on that little floating thing in the bottom there and you say, Hey, uh, I need help. Call me. <laughs> now you can just write your question and we'll answer it, but I don't know if they can see it on the screen there, Julie, but it, you see where it says, um, let me just screen on zoom in on it. Do you see where it says right here? Send us a message. We typically reply in under two minutes. Let me tell you, that's not a sales thing. That's accurate. This company here at the bottom is a software we use. It's called Intercom. It costs us a small fortune a month. I mean, I'm not kidding. It's pretty expensive. I think it's like 500 a month. And that's and that that's a lot for just this chat thing, 500 bucks. But it is an incredible software that we use to help serve our members. But anyway, they're, they grade us. So where they say that we'll respond within two, under two minutes, that's them saying that. That's not us putting that there. My point is that uh, we're really good at customer service. Our power agents will tell you. We're very responsive. Now, if you don't like the whole chat thing, because I don't, if it were me, I would get on the chat and say, I don't want to chat. I want to talk to a human being. Can somebody please call me? And in two minutes, we'll call you. So, uh, and then you just express what you need. Okay. So anyway, next question, Julie. Oh, I have to share. Rady said to all those on the fence, I got here by accident and I'm so thankful I did because I finally found a place that departs from the concept of serving. That is my principle in the way in which I do my business. Clients needs first. And in this journey, I've bounced around so many uh, so-called mm -hmm. coaches who ask you with a straight face um, thousands of dollars for six months training. And at the end, one wonders if they actually have sell, have ever sold real estate. Mm -hmm. I am finally learning so much. And I wish my broker, when I started this in this business, had taught me 
a fifth of what I'm learning with power agents, the values and valuable. What are you waiting for? That made me cry. <laughs> that, made me cry. that made me cry. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was very kind. Can you please keep track of that? Julie, keep track of that name. I think we, I know who uh, our next uh, power agent of the month is going to be. Um, um, Darlene, yeah. she says, I love new agents. I learned uh, even after 36 years in the business. I love it. Awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, uh, Jay, Jay Shree, I hope I said that right. So thank you. I'm excited. I want to get started now. Awesome. Well, let me tell you. So if you're a new power agent joining, first of all, a couple of things. Number one is, you're gonna. We have a, a system that's called onboarding, and what that means is that you're gonna get a series of emails. Um, now, the first time the email could go into spam, so uh, make sure you check spam as soon as you sign up. That's the first thing, and then if you can whitelist that, because there's two services that send out our emails, so sometimes one of those services goes into a spam folder. That's number one. Number two is that you're going. We're gonna hold your hand in the first 30 days. With a lot of emails, you'll get a phone call from me. And so we're onboarding you to take care of you. Uh, the other thing to be proactive, and we'll tell you this as well, but while you've got me personally, um, there is this thing called onboarding. And what this is, is a training program to help you get acclimated to being a power agent. And we have eight modules. And these modules bring you through two things. Number one, how to become a power agent and get the most out of the program but also um, how to do your business and how to um, you know, make more money. So when you, when you uh, finish one of the items, you check it off and you get points and the points go up, but there'll be hyperlinks too. So for example, in this first module, it says head over to the Power Agent directory and fill out your profile. So if I click on it, it'll actually bring you to the directory and here's the directory. Now, the reason why I'm pointing this out to you, you'll notice some power agents have not put their photos for shame, for shame on them. And there's something that did. Now, um, I will tell you when you click on update your directory, it'll bring you to your profile and then you can edit it. But this, this directory, we're seeing about four to five referrals a month between power agents. So you really should update this. And the most important part, and uh, we'll tell you all this later, this is obviously Sarah, my vice president. But um, where you put area served, um, this is how people can find you. And um, so make sure you update that and edit that as well. Okay. Awesome. Next Next question. Question. Should we print out the slides for our presentation binder? I know you've said in the past not to use an iPad. Yeah, you can, you can, I'm not a fan of using iPads. Um, I'm a fan of printing out and doing uh, a three ring binder presentation. I'm not saying not to do the iPad. The problem with the iPad is th there's something um, there's, there's something that gets lost in the human aspect of it. It's more of a presentation. We teach listing conversation. There's something about having a book where you can open up the book and flip from page five to page 20 to page six. Like you can jump around so much easier and, um, it's, it's, it's more engaging. It's like a photo album, whereas the iPad is a little bit too sterile. I think it's good to have an iPad to maybe show your website and show some digital stuff, but I would, I would have that be almost as if it's a part of the appointment, but the appointment itself should be in a three ring binder with paper. That's what I teach. Next question. Julie, you there? Yes. I don't oh. know why that cut okay, off. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I've been, Jessica, I've been meeting, calling FISBAs and expires, and they agree to meet with me. But when I call to confirm or when the day of the meeting comes, they stand me up. Uh, where on the communication do you think I'm messing up? So here's what I would ask you to do is um, if you're a power agent, um, on Monday on the coaching call, you'll be able to come off hold. And what I'd want to do is role play with you an actual call so I can hear maybe what you're doing. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is you should not call to confirm. All right. So the fact that you've already got the appointment, um, you don't need to confirm it. Okay. You're just the, you confirming it. Uh, watch this. It's almost like saying this. So are you sure you want to still see me? <laughs> if they already gave you the appointment, why would you confirm it? Assume that it's, it's confirmed. They gave it to you. So calling to confirm is only giving them a reason to back out. Don't call to confirm. Um, the third suggestion I would say is you should have the appointment ASAP. 
So if you talk to them on Monday and you're going to see them Friday, that's too long. Because what happens, like when you call them on Monday, you moved them in that conversation to say yes to you. Every hour that goes by, whatever you said to move them, this it goes away. And they go back to where they were before you even called them. So I would rather, if you call them Monday, that you go Monday night. Like I always try to schedule the appointment for the next hour to, all right, I'll, I'll be over in an hour. I'll see you then. There's no chance. There's no need to confirm. There's no chance of them changing their mind. So every day that goes by from when you make that call is a day for them to disrespect you and not have that attachment or feel like they owe that appointment to you so they don't aren't there, et cetera. So those are my suggestions without actually hearing the call, but be on the Monday coach and I can help you more. She Next is question. power agent. So she's, so Jessica, do be on the, on the call. You can role play with, with Daryl. Yeah. Um, okay. perfect. How do you suggest a commission split? Um, Regina, I'm not sure I understand. How do you suggest the commission split? Oh, you mean, oh, okay. I get it. Okay. Regina. Great question, Regina. So here's how I think of the commission split. To me, the commission split that you pay out is what you want to pay out to motivate agents to show your listing. Okay. So let's say you get, and I'm just picking a commission of 6% as an example to have the numbers. You know, traditionally in a lot of markets, it's 50-50, right? Three and three. I didn't look at it that way. I looked at, if I had a listing that, man, this thing is priced right, it's going to sell quick, or I'd rather sell it in-house so I can help control the transaction more because of this particular client, it would be in their best interest to manage it that way. If I got 6%, maybe I'd pay out two and we keep four. If let's say I've got a listing that needs extra help, that's not going to be an easy sale. I need more eyeballs. I need to motivate the agents more. And it's a 6%, maybe I'll pay out four and I keep two because I'm going to put that little extra out there because I need the showings. So the Selling Brokers Commission, Regina, is a marketing tool. Based on the situation of the client, what's best for the client is what you decide on what to pay out. Next question. Um, what about the objection you don't sell in this price range? In other words, you don't have experience as a luxury agent. Oh, that's easy. Um, where do you think all these luxury buyers are coming from, Mr. and Mrs. Hunter? Hunter? They're move up buyers. The very people that you want to get into your house are the ones that my client, that my company is usually working with, my team, my agents, my listing. The, all of the inventory we have in my current database. They're look there. That's the first people I'm going to market to is to get them to upsell, uh, to, to sell and buy into your property. So the, you don't want to list with a company that's dealing with the same people you want You want to expand your exposure and the people you want to expose to is the very people that most of my client, my company, it does work with. That's number one. Number two is it, that even is secondary because what you're hiring is the skill and ability of the individual agent. There's, let me tell you something. There's plenty of agents that sell million, $2 million properties, but yet, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't list with them because they're not skilled at doing it. What you want to, you got to ask yourself the question, do you feel connected to me? Do you think I have the skill and ability to work harder for you than anybody else? Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. This would be a feather in my cap, but I'll tell you this, I'm going to work harder than any other agent that you would have because I'm not going to get paid until I get the job done. And if I get the job done, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you when I get the job done, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, it's like, I'm, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going to write it down that you, you promised to give me a testimonial that, that I can use to send to your neighbors and brag to them because that I'm not looking just to get you. So I'm looking to get your neighbors and your friends. And the best way for me to do that is I wow the heck out of you. Does that make sense? All right, let's do this. All right. Next question, Julie. Wow. That was really good on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you say when somebody says I need to net more money on the sale of my home? Why? Why, why do you need to sell more money? Why do you need to net more money? That, that's that that's Leslie. That's my question. Why why do you, why do you why why why? 
Now, the homeowner is going to say one of several things. Well, because it's the house that I'm buying. OK, so in other words, what you want to do is you want to not sell your house for what it's worth. You want to sell for more than what it's worth. And what we need to tell those buyers is we need the buyers to pay more money to help you buy your new home. That doesn't work that way. Um, you need it because you already refinanced and took the money out. Well, you already took your equity out. See, what a house is worth is what a house is worth. And, and it has nothing to do with what you want or what you need. Because it's what a buyer says your house is worth. And it's what the bank says your house is worth. That's what determines value. Doesn't matter what you need, what you want. That's not how it works in anything. So, you know, if you buy, if you bought a stock on the internet, if you bought a stock, I don't know, let's say you bought Amazon at, at $1,500. I don't know what it is right now. Let's say it's worth $1,200. Do you, do you say, okay, well, I, I, I'm going to sell for 15 because I need to get my money back. You know what all the buyers are going to say? No, it's worth 1200 So until you're willing to sell it at 12, you ain't selling. And that's what you're going to do here. So, all right. Um, I want to ask uh, what's okay. For, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure, Julie. I'm not getting what you're saying here. So you want to, you want to just tell me here? Do we have any other questions? Do we have any other questions? Any other help? Okay. Well, listen, I think we are good to go. So I'm, we've done with the questions, gang. I'm going to ask you to, uh, Become a make a decision. Get access to this. Pro it's five dollars. If you're a guest, I encourage you to uh, to click on the little thing, lock it in, check us out, check under the hood. There's a lot of value here, and I'm going to tell you the last thing, everybody. Power agents as well. The market is is going to shift into our benefit now. It's been a really really tight market, but the listings are going to start coming. And you need to be prepared for that because some agents are going to be sleeping on the wheel. And this is the program to help you do that. We have for you the listing appointment, how to handle objections, everything. This is the time to get skilled as a real estate professional. So especially my power agents, start going through stuff, get rehearsed, get a lot of appointments, and, uh, and that's it. All right. Well, listen, here's the last thing I'm going to say. I want to thank you all for taking your time. I hope I made a difference with you and provided value. Um, the last thing I want to tell you is remember this, that what you do is much more than just list and sell real estate. What you actually do is help people get to their next level in their life. People who sell a house or buy a house, they're doing it for a reason. Um, child is on the way, job transfer, um, just a better quality of life. What you do is make a difference in people's lives. When people are buying or selling, this is a life-changing experience, and you are blessed to be in the profession that helps change people's lives. So the money you make is a gauge as to how many lives you've touched. So if you focus on making a difference, using real estate as your tool, but you're committed to making a difference in the world, the money will follow you, all right? God bless you. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. I hope I made a difference with you. Please stay safe, stay focused. And of course, don't forget to keep smiling. Bye, everybody.